this video, we're going to cover the anatomy of the female reproductive system, including the external female genitalia and internal female genitalia. So let's get started. Here's the anatomical organization of the female reproductive system that I've drawn. Beautiful. And the female reproductive tract is located within the pelvis. And these organs, these structures can be referred to as the external or internal female genitalia. And we're going to break down each part. There's the vulva, which refers to the external female genitalia. The organs that make up the internal genitalia includes the vagina, cervix, the uterus, the fallopian tubes, and the ovaries. Now in the male reproductive system lecture, I mentioned how the reproductive and urinary tracts merge when the ejaculatory ducts join the urethra in the prostate. In the female, the reproductive and urinary tracts are separate from each other. So now let's subtract complexity by breaking down the external female genitalia, or the vulva. The vulva has multiple functions. It protects the internal female reproductive tract, micturition or urination, because the opening of the urethra is here, the tube that carries urine. And the third function is for sexual intercourse. So the vulva includes several structures. We have the mons pubis, which is a fatty tissue pad that's in front of the pubic symphysis, okay? So it's a fatty tissue that covers the pubic bone and it's formed by the convergence of the labia majora and it's covered by hair bearing skin. There's the labia majora, okay? The labia majora are these two external hair bearing skin folds that extend from the mons pubis downward. Then there's the labia minora, which lie within the labia majora, and these inner skin folds are hairless, and they protect the opening of the urethra and the vagina. These two skin folds form the hood of the clitoris. So the clitoris is under the clitoral hood. It's known as an erogenous organ, and the clitoris becomes engorged with blood during sexual stimulation. So similar to the male structure, it's composed of erectile tissues called pora carbinosa that gets filled with blood during stimulation. The next part is the vestibule, which is the part that is protected by the labia minora. It has the opening of the vagina and the urethra. So here's the urethral opening. Okay, so that's the external female genitalia. Let's now move on to the internal female genitalia, starting with the vagina. Now, what I've done here is I've colored in all the other parts gray besides the part we're talking about. So similar to the anatomy of the male reproductive system lecture, okay? And on the top right-hand corner, there's the frontal view and the organ colored in. Before we talk about the vagina, let's label the other parts in this masterpiece, in this drawing. So this right here is the pubic bone. This is the abdominal muscle, then the bladder, and anus. So here's the vagina, okay? It's an organ of the female reproductive tract that has multiple functions. So number one, sexual intercourse, so penetration, and it helps with transport of sperm to the uterus. The second is menstruation, so it's a passage for menstrual fluid and tissues to leave the body. And third is childbirth, so it provides a passageway, it's the birth canal. So the vagina is a muscular tube that connects the uterus and cervix to the outside of the body. It's close to other organs such as the uterus, the bladder, and urethra, and also the rectum and anal canal. Then the next organ is the cervix, which is the lower part, it's the lower portion of the uterus. It connects the vagina with the body of the uterus. Now let's zoom into this structure. The cervix consists of two regions, the ectocervix, which is this part here, and it's the part that leads to the vagina. And there's an opening in the ectocervix called the external os, which leads to the endocervical canal, so this colored portion here. And the endocervical canal, or the endocervix, which is the inner part of the cervix, 
leads into the uterus. Now, there's this narrowing called the internal os that leads to the main body of the uterus. The cervix has two main functions. So number one, assists the transport of sperm into the uterine cavity by the dilation of the external and internal os. So it's a channel for sperm to travel to the uterine cavity. And the second function is for protection, protection of the uterine cavity and the upper reproductive tract. It helps maintain the sterility. Okay, so that's the cervix, the lower portion of the uterus. And that leads us to the next organ, the uterus. So the uterus is a thick-walled muscular organ. It's this organ that's between the urinary bladder and rectum. And this is the area where the fetus develops during pregnancy. The uterus has multiple functions. It's the source of menstruation. So if the egg isn't fertilized, the lining of the uterus shed. And this is the source of menstrual flow. Another function is to nurture and house the fertilized ovum. Okay, so until the fetus is ready to be delivered. And it also provides structural support to the surrounding organs, so separating the bladder and the bowels. Let's zoom in closer to the uterus. The uterus has three parts. The fundus, which is the top of the uterus. The body, this is where implantation usually occurs. This here is the uterine cavity and the cervix, which is the lower part that connects with the vagina, okay? So that's the uterus. Let's now move on to the next structure, the fallopian tubes or uterine tubes or oviducts. The fallopian tubes are these hollowed, uh, these paired hollow muscular tubes that are J-shaped and they are located in the opening of the abdominal cavity, specifically in the upper border of the broad ligament near the ovaries. So let's zoom in closer to the J-shaped tubes. The fallopian tube has four main parts. The isthmus, which is this narrow section here that connects with the uterine cavity. The ampulla, which is the widest section of the fallopian tubes, and fertilization usually occurs here. The infundibulum, which is this funnel shaped near the ovary, and the fimbriae, which is the next part, are attached. So the fimbriae are these finger-like ciliated projections. It's lined with ciliated epithelium, which captures the ovum from the surface of the ovary. So the function of the fallopian tubes are to transport the ova, the egg, from the ovary to the uterus each month. So the fimbriae will capture the egg and move it towards the uterus because the fallopian tubes are lined with ciliated epithelial cells, columnar epithelial cells that sweep the ovum towards the uterus and provide it with nutrients, okay? And this movement is caused by the cilia and by peristalsis, which is rhythmic contractions of the smooth muscle layer of the tubes. The muscle is sensitive to sex steroids, so when estrogen levels are high, peristalsis increases, okay? And if the egg is fertilized in the tube, it will transport the fertilized egg to the uterus for implantation. The blastocyst usually implants in the main body of the uterus. So in order to get pregnant, the eggs must be successfully transported through the uterine tubes. A form of permanent contraception is tubule ligation or tubule sterilization, which seals off the tube, interrupts its function. This is commonly referred to as getting your tubes tied. Okay, so those are the fallopian tubes. The next organ, are the ovaries, the female gonads. The ovaries are paired almond-sized organs located in the upper pelvic cavity, and there's one on each side of the uterus, okay? So there's one here and the other there. The ends of the uterine tubes are not directly attached to the ovaries, and the main function of the ovaries are to produce female gametes, oocytes, and produce sex steroid hormones, so hormone synthesis of estrogen and progesterone, so let's zoom in on the ovary here and take a closer look at its features. The surface of the ovary is formed by simple cuboidal epithelium, germinal epithelium, and the cortex, which contains connective tissue and ovarian follicles. And each of these follicles contain an oocyte. And then there's the medulla, which is formed by loose connective tissue and the neurovascular network. 
Now these structures here, these are follicles containing an oocyte. We're going to cover this in the menstrual cycle lecture. We're going to break down how follicles and oocytes develop and mature and how a single egg every single month is selected to be ovulated with the potential of being fertilized. So that is the anatomy of the female reproductive system. In this lecture, we learned that the female genitalia can be divided into the external genitalia and internal genitalia. We broke down each organ and their functions, and we talked about how the uterus and the ovaries go through several changes every month to prepare for a possible pregnancy. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to EKG Science so you don't miss a single lecture. And remember, subtract complexity and slow down. To study the next lecture, simply click the next video or you can view the entire playlist. Hey, stop procrastinating.